Hello and welcome back to my Dunbrock Defense Toy Box for another episode of Toy Box Tutorials. We're looking at the economy system in Disney Infinity and last time we looked at the money manager which allows you to set up your currency and keep track of the amount of money that the players have. Before we move on I thought it might be helpful to see an overview of the economy system and how it works. So I put together this little diagram. This might help you see how each of the specific creativa toys fits into the overall economy system. So here's how it works. Players earn money in various ways. And we're going to talk about that in a few episodes here, but players earn money and that money is stored in a purse or a piggy bank. The money can be used to buy toys from a shop and the toys that are purchased are then stored in the player's inventory. Players can then add toys from their inventory into the toy box. The money manager is the toy that manages the purse, and we looked at that last time. The icon on the money manager is actually a piggy bank, so you can think of it as a purse or a piggy bank. Either one will do, but it's where the money is stored. Now if we go sequentially on the diagram, the next topic should be the shops but we can't really talk about shops or do anything with a shop unless we have some place to store the things that we buy. So today we're going to talk about the inventory and the creativa toy that handles that is the inventory manager and you can find this in the creativa toys drawer um, once you've unlocked it from the toy store. So I'm going to place one right here. The inventory manager controls the toys that players have and that they can use in a game. Those toys are a subset of what is normally available in the toy box editor, so the things that you normally see in these drawers. So you cannot have in your inventory something like a pack or a tool because that kind of toy is not available in the editor drawers. So let's go into spark mode here and we'll open up the logic menu for this. And the first thing you'll notice is there are no properties, but there is a set inventory option, and this allows you to specify what toys the player initially has in their inventory and how many of each. So if we select that, the only thing we can do here is select the plus sign. So I'll do that. And the little menu on the bottom, of course, shows you do that with A on my Wii U. So I select that. And this brings up a little menu window system here on the right and um, the name at the top corresponds to an editor drawer so at the very top of the the uh, window there you see where it says Disney Infinity 3.0 playset townspeople that's the same as a drawer out in the editor and if I use the L or R buttons on my Wii U you'll see that the uh, drawers change and that um, it's the same names, the same drawers that are in the normal toy box editor. But you'll also notice that the drawers are not in the same order as the editor. <laughs> and the toys in the drawer are not the same as in the editor either. So it can be a little bit of a challenge to find things. But let's just go ahead and throw, we'll put a horse out here in our inventory. So I selected that. And then I'll press R to go to another drawer and we'll go over to the gameplay toys drawer. But you'll see all the things that you can add in the inventory are the same as what you would normally have available through the toy box editor. And there's 33 drawers, so it takes a while, here we go, to get to the gameplay toys drawer. And let's scroll down a little ways. And again, as you see, these are not in the same order. Those of you who are familiar with the Gameplay Toys drawer will recognize that right away. So you may have to scroll through here and hunt for what it is you're looking for, but I'm going to throw a health capsule in here, and we'll also put our Asgardian spread turret here, those three things. And then we'll close out of this by going back. Okay. So I've set up a starting inventory with three items. We have a horse, we have a health capsule, and we have the turret. So as I select each of these items in this menu, 
uh, you'll notice the menu on the bottom of the screen. You can, on my Wii U, press A to adjust the count, Y to delete, or B to go back. So if, for example, on the horse I select adjust count, that brings up this little slider. And um, the default is INF, and that means infinite, which means I can drop as many horses as I have memory to hold. And um, so that can be decent. And all of these are set to that by default, as you can see. Now if you want to change that, you can just go left or right on the D-pad here, and you can set this to however many you want them to have in their inventory. This is a count. I'll set this to two, but you can go up as high as 100. So we have that set to two. The other two are set to INF. All right. Now notice we don't have a separate inventory for each player. So just like the money manager, there is only one inventory, just like there's only one purse, and the players share that inventory. Also, just like the money manager, this toy is off by default, and so it isn't enough just to add this toy to your toy box and set the initial inventory. You have to activate it, or it won't do anything. And the only way to do that is with a logic connection, because there's no property here to turn that on. So you'll have to use a behavior to do that. And um, when you do, this toy will broadcast some trigger signals. So we'll look at those in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and drop another button out here. So I'm going to pick this one up and put it down. We'll place a, another button over here. And we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. And we'll come over to our inventory manager. And you'll notice there are three behaviors. So just like the money manager, you, have, you can activate it, you can deactivate it, and you can reset it. I'm going to use this third button that I just dropped to do a reset. Okay, so that's this button. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and use the same button to reset our money manager. I wasn't able to demo that last time, but I think I can do that today. So we'll do that to reset the economy. And now for my particular toy box, I want the um, inventory manager to be active as soon as the game loads the toy box, which means that I need to use the level starter to turn it on. But we need to be really careful here, because once the inventory manager is activated, it's going to take over the toy box editor and replace it with the contents of the inventory, and you'll see that in a moment. And that means we're going to be locked out of the normal toy box editor until the inventory manager is deactivated. So before we activate this toy, we need to make sure we provide a way to deactivate it. Otherwise, if we use a level starter to activate this toy and we don't provide a way to deactivate it, we're going to be locked out of the normal toy box editor and we will never be able to edit this toy box again, ever. And so I highly recommend saving a backup copy of your toy box before you ever set up a logic connection to the inventory manager, all right? I've already done that ahead of time. I've made a backup copy of my toy box, and I did that. Um, just a demo here. You do that by going into the menu, menu, going down to save, and do a new toy box save once you're in that window. So let me edit, exit out of that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take our little off button here that we use to turn off the money manager, and we're going to use that same button to turn off the inventory manager. So a new logic connection when pressed. Make sure we deactivate this, and I'm making this connection first because I want to make sure I don't forget to do this. <laughs> we want to make sure we have a way to turn that thing off. And then I'm going to come over to my level starter, and we'll do a new logic connection on Catalyze. And we will turn this on. We'll activate it. All right. And last time we connected this button up to the level starter, so I don't have to exit out of the toy box and reload it in order to test this, which is good because you do not want to do that for this. Um, we want to test this before we save it. All right. So we saved a backup copy. Then we make our logic connections. Then we test it and then we can back it up.
All right. So now that we've got this uh, all hooked up, let's go ahead and test it out. So we come over here to this button, which activates the level starter. Push the button. And now you'll notice in the upper left corner, the money manager is now active. It's showing we have our default 20 coins. And if we come into the editor, what you'll notice is the only toys we now have available are the ones that we specified in the inventory. So you'll notice it keeps the categories too. So we have mounts, and the only mount that's available is the black horse. And if we go into the next drawer, under gameplay toys, we have our health capsule and the Asgardian spread turret. And those are the only two uh, drawers that we have, because those are the only two drawers that we use to populate our inventory manager. All right. Okay, so now that we know we can safely activate this toy before we do anything else with it, let's exit out of this and let's turn this off. So we have our sparks back in the upper left corner. And if we open the editor, now we have all of our toys back. So that's really, really good. <laughs> so at this point, we can save our toy box and it's safe to do that. Now let's go ahead and reactivate. So we'll turn on the economy system again. That turns on the money manager and the inventory manager. So we had specified INF infinite for the black horse, and that means we can drop an infinite number of these things as much as we have memory. Okay, so no problem there. If we go to the gameplay toys, you'll notice we have a two next to that. This is the count that we had specified. And if I place one of these, the count drops to one. If I place a second one, the count drops to zero, and now it will not let me place another one. Notice the bounding box around that is red. Won't let me place that. All right, but I can place the Asgardian spread turret because I don't have a count limitation on that. So if we drop that over there, we're good to go with that. And we can drop as many of those as we want. Okay, now we've placed our toys there. Let me go ahead and edit, uh, exit out of the editor, and I want to show you something. <laughs> Immediately that turret starts attacking me, <laughs> and that's a problem. Let me go ahead and turn this off, and we're going to reset our inventory and the money manager. And let's go into the editor and take all these toys out. So that toy, that turret, attacked me, all right? And the reason it did that is because by default, things like enemies and turrets and other harmful toys will attack players by default. And that's why it attacked us. Obviously, we do not want that to happen in a tower defense game. We want it to attack the enemy, not us. And the way to fix that is to assign the enemy or the turret to a team, like we discussed way back in episode 41. Now, how do we do that? Well, we start by assigning the player to a team. And so we're gonna go back up to the Creativa Toys. And if you remember, we have these four color team activators. So let's drop a blue team activator over here. And we're gonna put the players on the blue team. So we're gonna to come to our level starter, do a new logic connection on Catalyze, come over to our team activator. We're gonna set all players to the blue team. All right. And we can come over to our off button and take the players off the team if we want. So we will clear all players from teams. That will put player one and two, if we had a player two, on the blue team. All right, so now let's go ahead and turn everything back on. You'll notice Mickey now has the blue outline around him, which indicates he's on the blue team. All right. Now, fortunately, the 
the inventory manager knows what team the players are on, and it will automatically set the team for any toys that the player adds to the toy box and put them on the same team, assuming the toy can be assigned to the team. So for example, a health capsule can't be assigned to a team, but a turret can. So now if we place the turret, and we come out of the editor, it's safe to approach, it doesn't attack us, because Mickey is on a team. And so if I'm placing toys out of the inventory while I'm on the team, that will be assigned to the same team and we don't have a problem, okay? So during your game, you want to leave Mickey and you want to leave the players assigned to a team for the entire game. All right. Um, let's go ahead and turn this off. And we'll reset everything. There's one more thing that I want to show you. Whoops. <laughs> of course, now I'm off the team, so now it attacks me. We'll go ahead and delete that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but I should have been. Okay, so there's one more thing I need to show you about the inventory manager, and that has to do with shops. We have not talked about shops yet. That's going to be next week's tutorial. But for today, I have already set up a shop ahead of time, and a button to turn it on and a button to turn it off. And um, you don't need to worry about how to do that. I'm going to show that to you next time. But for today, let's just turn it on. So I'm going to begin to turn on the money manager and the inventory manager over here. And just as a reminder, you'll notice the Asgardian spread turret does not have any count on it because in the inventory manager, we had set that to infinite. But we'd set the count on that to two, okay? Well, so far, so good. Now let's come over here and turn on the shop. And in the shop, I had set up the shop with that same turret, and I had given it a cost of 10, all right? So now with the shop active, as well as all of the other toys, if I come into the editor now, you'll notice now this turret has a number of 10 on it. Okay, this is not the number of turrets that I have in my inventory. This is the cost that I specified in the shop. I know that because if I place a turret, the amount of gold is going to drop from 20 to 10. So if I exit out of this, notice the money in the upper left is set to 20. And I kind of wish it showed the money while you were placing toys so you could see how much you had left, but it doesn't. So let me place this. And then we exit. Notice in the upper left, the cost, the money that we have has dropped from 20 to 10. So I know that 10 on the Asgardian spread to it here does not refer to count, but cost. And you'll notice it didn't drop to nine. It's still fixed at 10. And so the numbers here in the inventory mean two different things, all right? One is a count, one is a cost. There's no cost to place a health capsule. The number is how many we're allowed to place, but the number on the turret is a cost. So the meaning of the numbers is inconsistent. They mean two different things, and unfortunately there is no way to know what the numbers mean just by looking at the screen. So for players, this can be confusing. And because of that, I highly recommend that if you're going to use the shops, do not use the count feature in the inventory leave them all set to INF or infinite. And if you don't want the players to be able to drop an infinite amount of something, then add that toy to the shop so that it will cost them something to place it. Okay, so let's go ahead and come out of the editor. Oops, turn that off, turn that off. We'll delete our turret. Oh, and I need to turn off my shop, too. So let me do that. And again, don't worry about shops. We're going to talk about that next week. Um, 
Can you have multiple inventory managers? That might be a question that someone would ask. Uh, yes, but only one can be active at a time, just like the money manager. So there really isn't any benefit that I can see to having multiple inventory managers, okay? Also, like we discussed last time, things that you buy in one toy box cannot be taken with you into another toy box. And I think, again, that's because the inventory manager in this toy box and an inventory manager in another toy box would be a different toy, just like the money manager in each would be a different toy, and you can't take the money from one toy box to another. Neither can you take the toys that you purchase from one toy box to another. So those two things are important to know as well. And with that, I think I've covered everything about the inventory manager that I need to cover today. Next time, we'll look at the third component of the economy system, the shops. Thanks for watching my video today. I hope it was helpful to you. If so, please hit the like button and leave a comment to let me know. It takes a lot of work to put together a tutorial like this, more so than my usual videos, so I appreciate your feedback. And if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to my channel and following me on my blog. That's all for me today. Take care.